Hey people, it's Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Tunematic style bridge, the bridge that we often find on classic Les Pauls or like this Gibson 335S that I recently did a paint job on for a client. I'm making this video because I also made a video on the Steinberger style headless bridge setup and so many people were interested in that, it gave me great feedback on the fact that I went into a lot of detail about how the bridge works and that's what I'm going to do today. Think about how the bridge, the saddles work, how the stop bar or tailpiece works. It's not so much a video about how to set up your guitar, although it does focus on how to set up the bridge itself. To find out more about how to set up a guitar, I'll be making other videos which include doing things like truss rod adjustment and intonation etc. But I guess I need to ask you to do all that social media jazz. If you are interested in things like that, videos like this, demos of the guitars I make, please like, subscribe, follow etc. But for now, let's focus on the Tunematic style bridge. The Tunematic bridge is made up of two main parts. The front part here is the bridge. The bridge has six individual saddles, one for each string. Each of these has a screw at the front which adjusts their position of the saddles and we've got a thumb wheel on each side to adjust the height of the bridge. The stop bar or the tail piece at the back um, is where the strings will thread through and pull tight to go over the saddles. So I've got a very short string here with a ball, standard ball end on. Let me just slot it through and show you what I mean. So it will come through, you'll see the ball there, pulls against the stop piece, pulls it against these two uprights, goes over the saddle here on the bridge, and actually it's the tension of the strings coming through the stop piece that hold the stop piece against its two upright pillars, and then hold this down, because the bridge itself isn't screwed in place, it just rests on the thumb wheels like this, just rests on, it's the tension that holds it in place. So I'm going to start by talking about the bridge itself and the saddles. So here we have the bridge taken off of the guitar and you can see the saddles, each individual saddle has a screw that goes straight through the centre of the saddle. There they are from underneath. I'm just going to give you a close up of how these work by taking one out. You can just about see a small piece of black metal inside where the saddle was where the screw went through. We can see it from underneath here just about. I don't want to pull it out but essentially that bit of metal is acts a bit like a spring. You can see it goes across the underside of the bridge. When the screw goes through it, the screw thread catches into this and as you tighten the screw, what happens is because this is attached to, or leaning against one of the threads, it starts to pull the screw back a bit like a spring would do. So it holds it in place. You'll also see, if I move the screw in a bit closer, the screw has got um, a smaller point at one end and it's a bit thicker at the top where there's no thread. That allows it to fit neatly into this space at the back of the bridge and then slot into the hole at the front. There we can see the hole without the screw in to hold it in place. And then the most important bit, the saddle. The saddle has a bit of a slant to it, a triangle. So if we were looking at it the right way round it has a slant like that. Now, this is really important for how your bridge is set up. To think about the slant and the fact that this is a thickness of maybe two millimeters. And that means that if your string is resting on the top of the slant here and the front of the guitar is on this side, your string is gonna be closer to the neck, the front of the guitar, than if your bridge was this way round, where we've now got the slant going forward so the closest your string can be is slightly further away. Let me explain that with the string itself. Here the string is resting on the saddle and if I turned it round it would rest on the saddle but slightly further forward. I hope that makes sense. So when we set up the bridge saddles we need them to be the correct way round in the bridge. So here you'll see the screw put back in with the little metal part which acts like a spring. It's got to be careful when you put the screw back in that that metal part doesn't catch on the screw and end up sort of halfway along it. So I just use my screwdriver here to push it backwards. It's still gra gripping into the thread of the screw so it's still going to act a bit like a spring and allow a bit of tension and pressure and hold the screw in place. If it was too far forward there's a risk it might snap and also it would limit the saddle coming back. So if I just show you 
what happens when I turn the screw you can see the saddle itself moving along the screw thread one way and the other way you'll also see from this angle the little groove in the saddle itself the little groove there that's the groove that the string itself will rest in one more thing to point out is that a guitar neck has a radius so it's got a bit of a curve and the center will be higher than the edges of the neck and this means that these screws here that go through the center of the saddle if I put them put a ruler against it you'll see the end ones are level and the middle ones are a bit higher if I put the ruler on the top here you'll see the middle saddles touch the ruler and there's a gap on the edge a gap on the edge ones that's so that when the strings go over here the ones in the middle are higher than the ones on the edges which actually means with the radius of the neck they'll be more or less equidistant from the neck depending on how you raise the thumb screws on each side, the thumb wheels on each side so here we can see the thumb wheels, the two thumb wheels on which the bridge is going to rest and you can see that just by turning the thumb wheel which you can do once the bridge is on you can adjust the height so it can go quite high and at the same time it can go all the way down so it touches the base I'm not going to quite put it all the way down at the moment I'm going to adjust them so they're roughly the same height but we'll come to the height in a minute what you will notice is that the saddle at the front compared to the saddle at the back have a slightly difference in their distance from the pick up to the center point of them so essentially the difference between the center point of this and the nut on the neck is larger than the one at the back if I show you I can just about fit my finger in that space but as I move it back you'll see it's not going to go there so this one's quite a bit further forward the reason for that being when we put our bridge on our strings are then going to go over the bridge but the saddles of the bass strings are always further back than the saddles um, for the treble strings. So your top E, almost always the saddle of that is going to be much further forward than the saddle of your um, bottom E. Now, remember the triangle on the saddle, the angle? You can see here I've got the flat, the back of the saddle, the flat is at the back. That means when I turn the screw to adjust it, I can simply push it all the way to the very back giving the maximum length for that string that you can possibly have because that's as far back as it will go and also the thumb wheel is slightly further back so here you can see that the low E string saddle is as far back as it will go with the slope pointing forward the slopes on the top three strings, so the top E are going the other way, so the flat part can go all the way forward making this string as short as it will possibly go so here you can see I've got it set up back on the guitar and I've got the screws pointing forwards on this bridge there's absolutely no reason not to have them on the other side practically though it's a bit easier for this setup to have them on the front because when you come in with the screwdriver it's easier to come down through the strings than over the tailpiece which will be coming here and the stop bar tailpiece might actually get in the way when it comes to adjusting it it's a matter of preference and it depends really on the actual bridge you're using and the setup you've got Les Pauls tend to come out of the factory with the screws at the front and just from this back angle without the stop bar in place you can see how the thumb wheels adjust the height and how you have control over each side when you're adjusting it you can also see that this bridge has a slight curve to it one of the great things about tunematic bridge like this is it very easily will go on any sort of arch top guitar whereas if you had a more fixed flat bridge sort of fender style it's not going to screw down onto a curved surface so you'd either have to flatten out the surface or somehow get one with a curve in it whereas this one easily allows that adjustment the anchor bolts for the stop bar on each side 
literally are bolts that just screw in and out and then the stop bar itself has these hooks that go over each of the bolts hold it in place. It's the tension of the strings that we'll talk about in a minute that holds it in place and I'll talk about how to adjust the height in a minute but essentially you can see when you turn the screw it goes lower and again you can adjust each side separately but unlike with the bridge where you need to adjust the height by adjusting the height of the bridge it adjusts the height of the strings this doesn't necessarily adjust the height of the strings in fact what it does is it affects the tension on the strings as they come over the saddle so it's quite important how this is set up so with a back view again we can see into the stop bar and the slots where the strings will come through and the ball will catch into the back of the stop bar holding it in place and it's the tension on all of these strings coming through that's basically going to push your stop bar, your tailpiece into the anchor bolts and hold it in place stop it coming away so as soon as you take all of the strings out or loosen the tension enough you'll be able to pull this off to remove it if you need to so the first thing to mention about adjusting the height of these two is the most important thing to do first is adjust the height using the thumb screws of the saddles. So this part of the bridge needs to be adjusted so that your string height is correct so you've got the right action on your guitar. I'll have a whole other set of videos put up soon about setting up a guitar talking about action and string height but once this is set then we can adjust the stop bar height. Now as you can see here, the stop bar is quite high and this angle is very subtle. That means most of the tension on the string is coming from the string being pulled between where the ball enters the stop bar and where the other end of the string is on the tuning pegs. What will happen as we lower the stop bar is this angle will become greater. So I'll show you another bit of string. This angle will become greater and we'll get more tension on the string. The more tension you have on the string, coming from this part, the more tension you have, the tighter your string's gonna feel when you're bending your strings. So it's really a personal choice as to how tight you want it for that reason, but it needs to have a certain amount of an angle on it, certain amount of tension, because if it's this shallow, or if it, the stop bar was even higher, there'd be not enough tension to hold this in place in the little groove on the saddle so as you played it it would literally slip out and if it was any higher the string wouldn't even touch the saddle so what I'm going to do now is just lower the saddle so when you're adjusting the bolts on each side of the stop bar you don't want to use a screwdriver here we've got a screwdriver although it fits in the slot you'll see that it, there's a lot of wobble in it and it slides each way here when I turn this you can see is catching in the center of the slot on the bolt and that means you're probably going to chip it and damage it and it's going to look scruffed and and a bit nasty I mean you can do it with this no problem if you don't mind what it looks like but I always use a lollipop stick a lollipop stick just slots in and then you can turn it and what you need to remember is you want to turn them equally, the one on each side of the towel piece. The bigger the angle as you raise one and not the other, the more pressure is going to be put on the each side of the towel piece, which could also damage or pull the bolts in towards each other, and you don't want that to happen. So raise them and lower them equally. What you can see is happening here now is as I lower this, the tension, the angle is getting tighter, so the tension will be stronger. You'll feel it potentially when you're bending strings. If it's too tight, if the angle is all the way down, there's a risk that this could, this string could angle and actually touch the very back of the bridge part of the saddle. So look, at this angle it's not quite touching, a bit more and it would touch. If it touches there and then bends, what will happen is the string will pivot at the saddle, touch the back of the bridge part and then go down into the stop bar. So it would be pivoting twice and you'd have this little bit of string between the saddle and the back of the bridge with loads of tension on it which could cause it to snap. So you don't want that at all. So you've got to watch as you lower this that it doesn't get so low that it's touching the back of the bridge. Remember I've set this bridge to the correct height, the saddle's at the correct height for my string action. 
So I know I can't adjust this by making this lower or higher. I can only adjust this any lower and it's going to start touching, so it's a bit risky. But some people want their tailpiece all the way down. Let me tighten it some more and show you. So it's actually hard to see in this shot because of the reflection, but that string is now actually touching the back here and the top here, but the, towel, the stop bar towel piece isn't actually touching the base of the guitar yet, the body of the guitar. Now the reason some people like it all the way down is they believe if this towel piece is touching, screwed right down and touching the guitar body, what you're going to have is better resonation throughout the guitar and a better sound on the guitar. Personally I don't think that matters. I'll show you how to get around that by slotting a string in the reverse way like this into the stop bar and pulling it through so the ball end comes through the front I can then wrap the string directly over the top and rest it on the saddle now what this means is that the string is making contact with the top of the towel the stop piece the towel bar here instead of coming out from the hole there, which means you could lower this towel piece all the way down to touch the guitar and this string would still be high enough that it's not resting on the back of the saddle part of the bridge. So back down at this angle we can see the first string with the towel piece now screwed all the way down. The first string is coming over the saddle, touching the back of the bridge and then coming down. So there's going to be a lot of tension in this little gap here which is not good for the string. The string that we did with the wrap around comes over the top and rests on the string on the saddle here. So now it's coming from this height. I think personally the angle might be a little bit shallow but there we go. So that's one way around it really just depends on the setup of your own guitar as to which is going to work for you. Personally I wouldn't screw the towel, stop piece towel bar all the way down I would have it higher than that so this angle is a bit more shallow so this is coming over and not touching the back of the bridge part there. Great well I hope you found this video useful I've just got two more variations of the tunematic bridge that I want to show you one such example is on the Skull and Crossbones guitar that I've got here I'm going to get down to the workshop bench to show you that in a moment but for now if you've got any questions or comments about how this bridge works please do get in contact leave comments on social media etc don't forget to like and share um, but until my next video happy strumming on this version of the bridge the ball end of the string slots into the stop piece just very simply like this pulls through the slot and then it's held in place then it goes over the saddle like that there's no adjustment of the stop piece, it's screwed straight into the body of the guitar. There's no altering the tension on it. The tension's all in relation to the height of the saddles. The saddles don't have thumb wheels, they just have a screw on each side. Simple. Another variation is to have a wraparound bridge, which gets rid of the use of a tailpiece or stop bar. You can see these holes underneath each saddle, where I can push a string through the hole pull the ball end through which will then hook into place and the string will wrap over the top and over the saddle so wrap around without a tailpiece or a stop bar another cool variation on this bridge is the screw right at the back of the bridge where it links over the top of the anchor bolt now here the screw is all the way back all the way back all the way out so the anchor bolt can go all the way to the back of the bridge so we see it from the side that means the bridge can go as far forward as it possibly can but if I were to turn this screw as the screw goes in further you will see the bridge moving backwards thus lengthening the length of the string because as you can see from this angle the anchor bolt can't go all the way to the back because the screw is now in there stopping it going all the way back so by tightening this screw so it goes all the way in the bridge goes further backwards giving you more length of the string and as there's a screw on both sides you can change each side of the bridge accordingly so making the base strings go even further back and as you loosen this one 
so there's no indent of the screw there. This side can go even further forward, giving more variation on the length of the string for the base and the top E.